in the most ironical combination of powers lies a goddess of war, who is also a goddess of healing. She could spread deadly diseases, but also cure them. She was feared by all, but also equally worshipped by all. The goddess we're talking about is none other than Sekhmet, who is referred to as being the bloodthirsty one by ancient Egyptians. But what was her entire story? Well, let's find out. There were several strong goddesses in the Egyptian pantheon. Of course, Isis, the great sorceress and mother of all gods, is the most well-known. However, the goddess of love and song, Hathor, was much more popular in ancient times. She assumed a number of different shapes, most of which were quite healthy and protective of the Egyptian people. But when Hathor was furious, she would transform into Sekhmet the Bloodthirsty, a terrifying lioness who thrived on the terror and blood of her enemies. She was shown in Egyptian art as a lady with a lioness's head, and sometimes her skin would be painted green just as Osiris was. She carried a long-stemmed lotus flower in her right hand and an ankh symbol in her left. A huge solar disk crowned on top of her head connected her to the sun deity Ra and to a Urius, the snake symbolizing Egyptian sovereignty. She is sometimes referred to in Egyptian texts as she before whom evil trembles, the mistress of dread, the mauler, and the Lady of Slaughter. In fact, the word Sekhmet meant powerful and mighty, and thus was rightly given to one of the most prominent goddesses, the most destructive female divinity, one who was the instrument of divine retribution. Sekhmet. Now, based on what we just discussed, she was originally an aspect of Athor, but over time, both goddesses separated into distinct beings, mostly because of how different their personas were. During the Middle Kingdom, Sekhmet adopted the characteristics and identity of Mut, the goddess of creation, and came to be associated with Bastet, the cat goddess. Although Sekhmet's origins are unclear, it appears that she was born in the Delta region, where lions were rare and were regarded to be enigmatic and mystical animals. She was the wife of Ptah, the patron deity of artists and the mother of the lotus god Nefertim, according to the Memphite theology. She was also the firstborn of the sun god Ra, and so Ra, Sekhmet, and Nefertim earned the name Memphite Triad during the New Kingdom. They were worshipped as a collective during the times of Egyptian history when Memphis was the capital of Egypt. Her cult was strong in the areas of Luxor, Memphis, Latopolis, and the whole delta. She was also revered as the mistress of Asheru in the Mut Temple of Karnak. As an offering, she often got the blood of freshly slaughtered animals at some of the temples, and it was done to try to quell her fury. It was believed that if her wrath was kept in check, it provided her worshippers with the power to defeat their enemies, and the stanima and fortitude to triumph over suffering and disease. Every day, rituals would be performed in front of a different statue of this Egyptian goddess in an effort to calm her great wrath. This explains why there are so many diverse representations of Sekhmet that have persisted to this day. As many as 700 scriptures of Sekhmet have been discovered in Amenhotep III's temple. This Egyptian goddess acquired such a bad reputation as a result of a myth in which she allegedly vowed to exterminate humanity. Drinking beer that had been colored crimson as blood was the only thing keeping her from destroying humanity. Therefore, at her yearly festival, which took place at the start of the year, Egyptians danced, performed music, and got drunk in an attempt to calm the goddess's wrath. This ritual had another meaning too, and that was to prevent the excessive flooding of the Nile, which ran blood red every year carrying upstream silt. It made sense that she would be connected to war-related operations, given her reputation for being harsh and cruel. Many Egyptian pharaohs chose Sekhmet as their patroness for the armed forces, because it was thought that she could unleash fire upon Egypt's adversaries. Sekhmet-themed banners and flags served as a visual representation of the pharaoh's military power when they were carried into battle. Hot desert winds were regarded as Sekhmet's breath during military operations, and festivities were staged in her honor following each victory to satisfy her and prevent more disaster. The figure of Sekhmet was proudly worn by the ruthless pharaoh Ramesses II as a sign of his domineering might. Sekhmet is shown riding Ramesses' horse and igniting the bodies of their foes with her fire in the friezes of the Battle of Kadesh at Karnak. She is frequently referred to be both a positive and negative power in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. She is, above all else, the protector of cosmic equilibrium, or Ma'at, even in her destructive side. But occasionally, she went too far in trying to maintain the delicate balance between life and death, using harsh methods to suppress the people. In ancient Egypt, plagues were frequently referred to be messengers or slaughterers of Sekhmet because they were expected to carry out her orders. Those who ventured to provoke Sekhmet were known to suffer from plagues and illnesses as a result. There is yet another very interesting tale about her, known as the destruction of mankind, and it appears just at the beginning of a longer myth named the Book of the Heavenly Cow. Of course, 
case, Hathor, the Egyptian deity, is the heavenly cow. According to the legend, Ra, the ruler of the gods, was the target of a revolt at the beginning of time, when gods coexisted with humans. Ra, although being a deity, had aged and weakened to the point where humanity believed he was unable to rule over them. He was prepared to leave the throne and return to the Nun, the primordial ocean, prior to this uprising. But now, since he was upset with people, he removed one of his eyes, and it changed into Sekhmet. He then ordered the eye to strike the seditious men with a heat close to the suns. And then the story is described as thus. The desert was dyed red with the human blood, while the eye was pursuing traitors and killing them one by one. It didn't stop until the sands were covered with bodies. Then, temporarily satiated, Sekhmet returned triumphantly to his father. Over the course of the next days, Sekhmet killed every man and woman she came across. But at some point, Ra felt that the punishment was sufficient and chose to spare the rest of mankind. The issue at hand was now to prevent Sekhmet from completing her mission, but Sekhmet refused to heed Ra's orders to stop killing because his eye had tasted human flesh, and she relished it. Sekhmet's favorite beverage, beer, was the only thing that could make her stop killing. Ra brought a red pigment from the desert and grinded it into a fine powder, which he then mixed with the beer. After that, he created 7,000 red beer jars and dumped them into the Nile. Sekhmet greedily drank the scarlet liquid, mistaking it for blood, till she became intoxicated and passed out. The Egyptian goddess had forgotten her goal of eliminating every single person when she eventually awoke and was finally in the feeling of satisfaction. She then went back to her father Ra, who was glad to see her and thanked her for her assistance. Until now, we have emphasized most of Sekhmet's destructive qualities, but she also had a kind side. As we've seen, the Egyptian deity had a strong connection to kingship. She was referred to as the mother of the enigmatic lion god Mahas in certain documented Old Kingdom traditions. The pharaoh had Mahas as a patron and protector and he himself is claimed to have been conceived by Sekhmet, according to the pyramid texts. This is further supported by several images of Sekhmet nursing various pharaohs, including Nyusera from the 5th dynasty, as well as extremely late monarchs like Taharko. One of the best instances of New Kingdom architecture, the Temple of Seti I, contains relics showing the pharaoh being breastfed by Hathor. The hieroglyphic writing just underneath the picture says, Hathor, mistress of the home of Sekhmet. And that's pretty much it about Sekhmet. What are your thoughts on her contrasting depictions? Let us know down in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time around. Until then, stay mythically mad.